that's who we are out there. So my name is Milton Fogg. I'm a Burke police officer in town of Burke. I've been there for 19 years. I've been SRO for about 16 years. And uh, I'm here today with the second team. I'm um, Calvin Lee Aaron. I'm a senior. I'm Malia Patel. I'm a senior. I'm Emily Bruce. I'm a freshman. Uh, I'm Jameer Rose. I'm a junior. Awesome. So we gathered these guys here today to kind of pick you guys' brains about what we can do to keep our younger kids safe and what we can do also as uh, parents to be proactive. So one of the first things I have to talk about, and feel free to chime in wherever you want, maybe talk about some of your own personal experiences with your parents, uh, is how important do you guys think it is for parents to have that open dialogue with their kid to where they feel like they can you know, come to them if something did come up through violence? Before I get into that, actually, how many of you guys, by a show of hands, have like TikTok or something like that? Okay. And use it regularly, yes. every day. Yeah. Okay. Is there any of them out there that I have no idea? Can we, you know, I've, I've heard of TikTok, I've heard of Snapchat. Do you have other ones? Is there any? Is there any? Is there Well, thanks. Ask Twitter and do. You guys use all these every day? I don't really Probably use Twitter, Twitter that option. At no. Um, so, how many platforms do you say you use daily? Very. Three. three. Okay. And the three big ones are? Snapchat. Big call. TikTok. Yeah. Let's well, say big call. Now, the worst, then you go through the online game. We click on them. You go over there. You do? Pops Freeze Arena. <laughs> what did you say? <laughs> I thought this Freeze Arena. What is Pops Freeze Arena? I make milkshakes. <laughs> is, that like, is that like Roblox? My kid plays Roblox in the club. Milkshakes and stuff. <laughs> That's great. I don't play any video games. You don't play any video games? Like, is it a thing too? It's weird because my daughter, I find my daughter like watching kids play games on YouTube. Yeah, like oh yeah. yeah. That's what my brother does. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> she even watches people like on rap here. So I'm like, why are we watching somebody else? <laughs> I'm like, what is that? And then there's Parker, he makes like millions of dollars doing it. Like, yeah. we will see and some of these other people. I have to used to watch that. Right? <laughs> I know, it's like, dude, you got your own stuff, why don't you go play with it? Yeah, but anyway. All right, so now we get that. So everybody here is social media. I'll be honest with you, I don't know anything about it. I, I have Instagram, I do is watch like the reels, the funny reels that are on it. I don't yeah. post anything, I don't know anything. Um, so you guys are going to help me out a lot. So TikTok, I mean, it's, is it all just videos of yourself? What do you do on TikTok? Like, what's your main thing on TikTok? Um... I don't know. It's a lot of funny videos, like very Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. Pretty, just pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah, it's the same thing. So just watching people do things and stuff. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. A lot of random stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's like it's very entertaining for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> like they yeah. put it to your interests yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed like, that. So yeah, like depending stuff. on what you like, like on TikTok, they like change your feet. Uh, that stuff that you yeah. Not even that. Just to like. How long you watch a video? Yeah, exactly. If you're watching video, same videos for longer, then yeah, I'm sure you can work it. Yes. Wow, so that's it's kind of it's just a way to almost yeah. like bombard you with a certain yeah. yeah. Like, there's a lot of like science behind the program. It's really to get yeah. people to keep it's using them. So it's like we go on Amazon and start looking for something next thing you know it's popping up like everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So it's like yeah. 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 the same track there. Yes, you can make it up and do that. Sure, it's for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> nice. All right. So getting back to the communication. So what do you, so what do you guys think? How how important would you say that that is? That your parents start talking to you. Like um, it's pretty important just to build like a basic communication with them. Okay. You know, like my parents have always made it sure made sure that I knew that it was like they it was from the point that they cared about me and not. Like that they would be upset about me, which made it a lot easier to talk about things, especially like with social media. Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. I always like my parents definitely made me aware of like the dangers of using social media, but also like reestablished like a level of trust when I got social media. So like they set a sense. Like, yeah, like what? Yeah, thing? and then like it was just like I don't know. I was kind of expected to follow those or like like. I've always felt comfortable like, sharing with parents like if something happened. Do you feel like that is because they were so open with you in the beginning? Yeah? I think so, yeah. So, I feel like option time, I don't know. I feel like this is kind of bad, but like I feel like when parents put like such like so much pressure on the kid, yeah. it really ends up like the kid kind of starts to act out. 
So how, how like, when they, can you like higher standards? Yeah, though? when they like or like when they limit a kid's usage of like you know, social media, then it makes the kid want to have more and like do more things. I don't know. That makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. the so, screen time thing really because some parents like take control of their kids' phones and they limit things, so then kids like get burner phones or they yeah. Like talk to their friends more about it. And, like they log into their Snapchat or whatever on their phone, or they're just getting more use of it. So you so guys are saying you know, the more over the top they are, the worse it is. Yeah, yeah. kids are gonna find a way. They like yeah. watch all this stuff and yeah. figure out how to do it. I mean, especially at like this day and age where everybody has it. Like I, my parents personally, I didn't get Snapchat until I was thirteen because my mom's thing was like, I don't want you to lie about your age. So like I waited until I was thirteen, but like my friends had it when we were in fifth grade. So that is not a question. So how old were you when you started social media? I think um, it was my birthday in sixth grade, so I think when I turned twelve. Twelve. So you're thirteen. Yeah, probably twelve. Twelve. Same thing. Okay, so your parents are. I mean, later. So I have like a just to give you, I have a nine year old. Like, we haven't even thought about even getting her yeah. a phone or anything yeah. remotely close to that. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think when they're younger, it's a lot easier for them to be influenced on everything that they would see, like especially on TikTok, where you're saying, like your kid watching those videos, people aren't rapping stuff. Yeah. The, those videos are made for kids. You know, they're not expecting kids our age to watch that, because why would we? But little kids <laughs> would watch that because that's what they're interested in. True. And so I feel like a lot of social media is aimed towards those younger kids. So I feel like when you give them that unrestricted freedom at such a young age, it's hard for them to really know what they should and shouldn't be yeah, doing. Yeah, I agree. I think definitely at the age of nine, like, restriction is, like, you need that. Especially, like, if they're watching videos on YouTube, that can escalate so quickly. Yeah. Like, they could be on one thing, and then like, the next video that comes up is, like, not good. So, like, they definitely so, need, like... So, just to, so, what I do, and like I said, I'm not an expert at mm -hmm. this by any stretch, but I, we just put parental settings on her iPad. Yeah, yeah. And she, it actually, the parental setting has to have my fingerprint on it to mm -hmm. buy or watch adult content and we filter. Yeah. Is that, you feel yeah. that's sufficient for kids that age? I think my parents did that when I was younger too. Like, in like the apps that you buy, like the apps that you download on your phone has to get approved by your parents. Yes. Yeah, that's, that's, what I did yeah, that's my parents. Okay. Yeah. That's how it was with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So she does the Roblox thing. And which is the online gaming thing. And I've had concerns, but, you know, I noticed that a lot of what they do on those things is they do filter, like, they filter mm -hmm. what you can say, so you can't say, hey, what's your address? And they like, yeah. say that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, but it does seem like they're getting a little more lax in that stuff, but I don't know. I just, I'm trying to get a feel for how old, so you, the consensus about, what, 11, 12? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then how do you guys feel about what Malia talked about, where she's like, yeah, my parents had, this was the standard, this was what, was expected. What do you guys think? Uh, my parents, they were, my, my mom was very strict. My dad was very lenient with it. So for me, it was like, my dad really helped me out. But with the standards, when I when they set very strict standards, I figured out ways to like, because my friends had it. So I just like go on their phones and like scroll on Instagram. Because I, I didn't get my first phone until I was 13. So I just figured out different ways to do it. Okay. And like, like some, like, my parents, like, they never took my phone. Like, they just, like, if they wanted to look through it, they looked through it. I didn't have a choice. Okay. So, like, it's all, it's like a trust thing, really, with parents. And mostly just, like, don't do stupid stuff. Like, if you think your parents are going to look through your phone, then, like, just know what you're doing, really. That's how my parents looked at it. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my parents, they never really like took my phone to look through it because they always trusted me with it. Um, I mean, there are a few times they took my phone if I like, got in trouble at school, yeah. but yeah. but they always like trusted me with that, which I feel like helped. Now it's a lot easier for me to talk to them about stuff and trust them with stuff. Okay. Yeah, I would say having older siblings hurt me a little bit because like, yes. their mistakes oh, yeah. Increased my standards mm -hmm. when it came to social media because they were trying to protect me from doing the stuff that they did Okay, and the mistakes that they made So you think yeah. that hindered you more? Yeah, well, I just like <laughs> it just like made it everything like a year longer to get stuff like TikTok I couldn't get till I was like 13 But I got I got Snapchat at 14, but my brothers got it at 10 or 11 
That's okay. crazy. Yeah. So young. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So let me let me throw this at you then. Mm. Hypothetical down the road. Jameer has a kid. Boom. This kid. What what what? And I'm not saying this is now. Yeah. All right. I'm just saying. So what what would you do as an adult now? Knowing what you know, growing up with this stuff. Now, I'm sure it's going to change between now and you have a kid. There's going to be changes probably faster. You'll be able to do everything probably. What, they got goggles now, right? Goggles. And like, oh I think some dude just put a chip in. Didn't Elon Musk just put a chip in someone's head or something? Yeah, like that. Seriously, I think they put a chip in a guy's brain. Yeah. Anyway, so so what, what do you think you would do? You got a, you're like me. You got a nine-year-old that's getting ready to come to oh, be. Daughter or son? She's daughter. Oh, okay. Yeah. So what do you think? What, what would you do if that was your kid? How would you navigate this world? Mm -hmm. I think I would, I would do the, like the fingerprint thing. Like I would have, until a certain age, till, I think until they were teenagers, I would have control over their electronics. Okay. But I think the main reason, I, only reason I'd let them have it is for communication purposes. Mm -hmm. When they're at school and stuff, like if they need to get a hold of me, like they'll have their cell, like cell phones or something. But when it comes to social media, I'm going to be pretty strict on it until they're like 13, 14. And then once they're teenagers, you have to build a certain type of trust. Like, yeah. Because if you, you're super strict on them, then they're going to start to go against you. Okay. And not really like mm -hmm. start to respect you. So your recommendation, control it in the beginning mm -hmm. as best you can, because you did say that you pretty much consensus was the more we try to control it, the more they're going to try to do it. Mm -hmm. There are kids in my kid's school that has a phone. And I'm like, nope, you're not getting a phone. Mm -hmm. And I know that there's like the 911 only phones and stuff like that, which I think we're going to look down the road, but I was thinking like 11, 12, mm -hmm. or even the 911 mm -hmm. phone. Now we yeah. do allow her to play games and stuff like yeah. that, which is still a risk, but yeah, I just... I don't know, I think for a new a parent trying to navigate this stuff who's mm -hmm. like I think middle school and I think you guys have been nail on the head that middle school is really yeah. where you gotta start. Yeah. Cause that's where a lot of this stuff stuff's Well a lot of a lot of apps have that age recommendation of like 12, 13. I think that's I think that's a good I think that's there for a good reason. Yeah, I think yeah. it's reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. I think that's probably when I would let my kids I'm honestly yeah. glad that I didn't get on social media before that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cause like I don't know, it's kind of funny Good seeing like friends as like like their Instagram pages when they were in like third grade. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny. Like I don't have anything to like embarrassing to look back on. Like, yeah. I mean, there's a yeah. Go ahead. I think I think if you give like younger kids access to social media, it has such a big influence because they haven't like experienced anything yet. Yeah. Like they haven't like seen anything. So when they see something on social media like repeatedly and repeatedly, like they start to believe it. It could be false or true. Like, they haven't experienced anything yet. So yeah. that influences them a lot. I agree. I mean, we just talked about it. That You go look for one thing, and next thing you know, you're getting inundated with that. So you think if you're just watching a certain thing, you're going to get more of that, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. good or bad. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So you got to, yeah. So if I'm here, everybody, it seems like the general consensus is to really kind of, you know, be aware with your kid, but don't be over the top. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so... With my kid, so you guys are going to help me. So mm -hmm. my kid now a 13-year-old. Your recommendation is to learn the apps and go with it, through them, with mm -hmm. it, through it with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, would you regulate how much time a day they're allowed to do? Or just say, nah, go ahead and do your thing? Um, I think it depends. I mean, my parents did regulate. But also what I did was I got Snapchat first, and then, like, a couple months later, I got Instagram. So it wasn't all at once. Mm -hmm. So okay. I think that would probably help with, like, time regulation, too. Okay. I, th I think when it comes to time per day, like, I know, like, for me personally, like, I have a lot of things that are important to me outside of, like, social media in school. Well, that's good. So, I think well, if I had a kid, they would have to take care of, like, their homework first. Then they'd have to, like, do something for else productive before that they can just sit there on their phone. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Go through stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's, if you set just the restrictions on their phone, they'll still find stuff mm -hmm. to do. But if you make it, like, if you give them unrestricted access, or not unrestricted access, but like with time, if you don't restrict their access on the phone, unless like you're saying, like make them do homework first and things like that, then they'll spend less time using their phones and stuff and not just less time on one specific thing. Because it'll be more engaged. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. it's important to help them find other hobbies too. I agree. Yeah. 100%. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, I, other hobbies. But if, if I had to, we'll start with you, Jamil, and work around. How many hours a day do you think you spend on social media? <laughs> <laughs> Just a rough estimate. 
I'll probably say <coughs> about four hours. And this is four a hours. multi-sport athlete, correct? Yeah. Four, you said how many hours? Four hours. Four probably. hours a day. Okay. And you've got other day. Do you yeah. ever have downtime in between seasons? No. No? So no. you're pretty much four hours the average. Yeah. I'm like probably four too. Four? Yeah. Also I just got like, I get like the daily, like the weekly like screen time average. Okay. And I got it on Sunday. It was like a little less than three hours. Awesome. Yeah, I think mine's probably three or four. It, when I was like a freshman and sophomore, it was way more. Yeah. And that was when, I mean, that was during COVID as well. But mm -hmm. like as I got older, especially getting a license, I do so many more things. I don't really find yeah. myself sitting down on gotcha. my phone as much. Okay. That's awesome. I mean, I honestly thought it was going to be way more. To be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I like, you know, just for my generation, we didn't have that. But still, my parents always instilled in me, you know, when we ate dinner, we all ate dinner at the table. But mm -hmm. now you go out to a restaurant with a family and you look at the any teenager that's in the group, what are they doing? Oh, all, the all, the all the whole time. And it's like, it drives me crazy. I mean, I think once you've had it for longer, you get kind of used to it and you don't feel the need to yeah. do it all the time. You say that, but like, I don't need to keep bringing up my family to this, but my in-laws. Yeah. So they're all older. And I swear my mother-in-law spends more time on Facebook than yeah. any teenage kid I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. And she's just, I'm like, what are you looking at every day that's My grandma does that. She loves like all the reels <laughs> and stuff, like the cat videos. <laughs> that's what she's looking at. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, that's me. Yeah, it's awesome. it's kind of, it's crazy that, so you guys are saying the more, so I have it, it's available to me, but I do less because I'm more engaged in other things. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when I was a freshman, didn't have those things, yeah. less. Yeah. I mean, especially during COVID, that was a big thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's also definitely a problem with younger kids is they got this access to it during COVID. Yeah. And so now like fourth and fifth graders during COVID are spending all day playing on iPads and like looking at things like Instagram reels and stuff. And I mean, like from like a science standpoint, what it does to your brain is it just makes you so dependent on having that. And it's a really hard habit to break yeah. because I mean, it, it literally becomes an addiction. Like your yeah. brain really wants to do that. And until you kind of get over that addiction, which is really hard to do on your own as a kid, you don't tend to lose that habit. Like I, I ended up getting over that habit of always wanting to play video games and stuff because of sports and working out and working, things like that. But before I did that, like all I wanted to do was play video games, you know. Uh, that your success story when it comes to that, because I've seen a lot of kids the other the other way, you know, they want to be the famous gamer, they want to be the famous yeah. YouTube person, so well, they have more time into it at that point. Yeah, I think I mean I think that's what happens with a lot of kids is they they want to be good at whatever they're doing, whatever they're into. You know, like like I want to do really well on track. I'm sure you want to do really well in basketball. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you want to do well in rugby. I don't know. Sports. Softball. Softball. You guys are all four yeah. athletes, right? All four yeah. Athletes. Okay. But um, but yeah. So like before, I didn't. When even when I was younger, like I liked track, but I didn't really care about it as much. And now it's like I really want to do well, and I focus more mm -hmm. on that than I would playing video games online. Whereas before, I wanted to be really good at that. So yeah, I think I think it's very dependent on like how much you want to commit to your sport and your goals. Mm -hmm. Like when I was a kid, I was just like good at the sports I played. I didn't really care. So I used to play the video game. Like I'd get home and I'd be on for like 10 hours straight. Like I was, I was a gamer gamer. But yeah. then, but then I realized like my goals and like my commitments didn't involve gaming as much. So I had to trim my time way down just to like really dive into like my commitments and my goals. That's great. Mm -hmm. So if you're if you're your parent back when you're in middle school, do you think it's more important to limit that time then? Or do you say, well, let them figure it out on their own eventually they'll pull out of it, even for but I think personally everyone that pulls out of it like Calvin, mm -hmm. there's still or you. There's that large group that never yeah. really pull out of it yeah. and they end up making it. It's so hard to say because it works differently for each kid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Like True. yeah. I mean like I think all four of us were probably raised differently, but we still kind of turned out pretty similar. But unanimously, all four of you are athletes. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. imagine if you didn't have... Oh, yeah, if you didn't have anything else, else we didn't have yeah. the sports. Yeah. Then, yeah. And there's, a, there's a large majority of these kids in the school that don't. don't. don't play, yeah. Or even in the middle school, for that matter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, um, my kid's not the most athletic kid in the world, but she does dance. She does dance a couple days a week. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. her, you know, and we, what I, what I do... 
you know, I'm, not, I'm trying to preach to you guys too. Because I'm trying to learn from this stuff too. Because I find myself scrolling. I think the last time I checked, it was like two and a half hours. I'm like, what am I doing for two and a half hours on like Instagram or watching like hunting yeah. videos and this? I'm like, what am I doing? But it's like all the same thing. But what I did with her was that we tried to make it to where she had to do a certain amount of steps on her watch in order to earn time on the pad. So if she, if she because we really were trying to increase her activity, you know, mm -hmm. and walking around, she would just do laps around the house to get her steps, and then she'd go up. <laughs> and say, "God, I did a hundred steps, so I get it, you know, twenty minutes." And I'm like, "All right, you're right." So, I mean, that was one thing that we kind of came up with that worked for me and works for her. But I want her to be active because I was always an active kid too. Mm -hmm. uh, but I just it worries me with this generation too that parents are kind of using the pads or the game or the phone as a babysitter instead mm -hmm. of like yeah. mm -hmm. engaging. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's harder because, like, when I was when I was younger, I had I had like a DS too, so I would do, I would do similar stuff. But like, like you're saying, like my parents made me play sports year round, yeah. and so because of that, like I was always active. It kind of made me enjoy it more as I got older. And like by the time I was in middle school and high school, I wanted to play sports. Yeah, you know, I wanted to do things like athletically. I wanted to ride bikes and stuff. Compared to when I was younger, I didn't want to, but my parents making me did that kind of built into that habit of like enjoying it and wanting to do it more. Gotcha. And ultimately, you said that's kind of like what stirred you away. Yeah. You went, and same thing with you. Yeah. You I'm saying, well, I got to commit more to my sport. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. I mean, you guys are giving great information. Seriously, I mean, this is this is huge, and I think, like I said, a lot of times, you know. Not only is there some of the games and stuff desensitizing to certain things too, but I think, I don't know how you guys feel about this, but it feels like to me, kids' tension span tends to go when they're watching TikTok because it's like that yeah. four second, you know, I've definitely what, noticed minutes. that on myself too. Yeah, yeah. And like you boring. lose the tension. And it makes it hard to watch movies. Like, I will watch movies and go on my phone. Like, I'll go, I'll just go on Instagram while I'm watching movies. As you're yeah. watching yeah. movies. Yeah, because yeah. I can't like watch the movie. It's, yeah, it's bad. Like, yeah. like it makes it hard for me to just sit down and. I went with my best friend this summer with his daughter as a teenager to a, a concert. We're at an outdoor concert, like literally this nonstop entertainment. And the whole time she's got a phone up. I'm like, oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I'm all about documenting the, the occasion, but the, every song you like, <laughs> like this or like this. I'm like, oh, how, how are you enjoying what's going on at the stage? It's like you're missing stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I, I want to make sure I'm. I'm accurately depicting what you guys are saying, that there has to be a balance there, that we have to maintain a balance. Yeah. You know? And it's important to set those boundaries early and then allow other things, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, 100%. A balance okay. is definitely needed just to like develop like life skills of just like going outside or like, I don't know, like working on wood with your dad or throwing the ball for the dog. Like yeah. instead of like sitting there at a screen or like binge watching a show, like I know I've definitely done that yeah. like watch like 14 episodes in a whole day like that's <laughs> a lot of screen time to have when you could have like gone outside with your parents or your dog or like anything gone for a walk even yeah how do you guys feel about that so i've always I, i'm just interested to know from the team brain how do you guys feel about making them shut it down about 30 to 40 minutes before bed like no electronics putting it on the table can't do it you know, to give your brain, brain enough time to settle so that you can then get into a good night's sleep. What do you guys think? Oh, yeah, it totally works. Like, it definitely, I think the problem is it's hard when when you're a younger kid, you don't really get it, mm -hmm. okay. you know? So, like, like now, I try and do that more because I want to get better sleep and yeah. stuff, but when I was younger, I didn't care about it. So, yeah, so, like, being told not to do that just kind of made me upset, and, like, I didn't really care. Um, and even now, like, I still find myself, like, looking at my phone before bed. But I think it's, it definitely is way more beneficial if you don't, but it's just harder to get younger kids to understand mm -hmm. because they're not really thinking about like what, how much better it would be if they got better sleep. Because like I know if I get better sleep, I feel so much better throughout the day. I mean, that's just how it works with everyone. Yeah, absolutely. And you don't realize that it's what you're doing before bed. And so like until you realize that, it's kind of hard to really like, to do it, especially a younger kid, if you don't really understand why you're doing it. True. Yeah, I hated when my parents let me put my phone out before bed. Mm -hmm. I think also because like I would want to talk to my friends, and then I would feel left out with my friends because my friends' parents never did that. 
So then, like, I felt yeah. kind of isolated because I was, like, the only one that was doing that. And I was, like, jealous. I don't know. But I have been trying, like, reading before bed. I've been trying to do yeah. that just because I would never read and, like, I need to get off my head. You notice that you get better sleep? Yeah. I really like sleep. So I go to bed pretty early anyways. But, yeah, I think it's definitely good not to be in a bed right before you go to bed. Uh, and, like, a lot of parents, like, my parents never do this, but I know parents that did, like, they'd, like, make their kid go put their phone on the table and then go back upstairs to bed just so you don't have it. Because having it right on your nightstand is so tempting just to, like, pick it up and look at it and, like, talk to your friends or scroll on TikTok or do whatever. It's just easy to have yeah. and to look at when you have it there. I think, I think the biggest problem with, like, right now is that kids are so addicted to social media that if you give them their phone, there's a very high chance that they, like, won't sleep. Yeah. Like, there's more of a chance that they won't go to sleep than they will go to sleep. So I think putting it up for them, even if they get mad, like, as a parent, you understand, like, that you're actually being beneficial to them. And when they get older, they'll eventually understand. Yeah. I think it's easier to get in trouble at night, too. Like, doing stuff on social media. Yeah. I think do it's probably just smarter. Yeah. It's, yeah. I don't know. Well, it's funny you should say that. So I was going to transition to a little more of the, you know, online safety type stuff now mm -hmm. um, just to get you guys' thoughts on some of the stuff. So some of the topics I have which are pretty big is like bullying, I had sexting, and uh, I can explain what sex worship is too, but let's start with uh, like, let me get a general consensus from you guys of how safe you feel or how much information you guys think is okay to put out there online. Like what, what kind of information you're like, ah, oh, that's okay, I can put out there, nothing's gonna happen to me with that. Just, I wanna get it, I don't wanna put my personal <clears throat> thoughts into it, I wanna see what you guys think is, is too much information. Um, or definitely like where you live, mm -hmm. especially. Like I never tell anyone okay. where I live online. Um, I think that's a big one. I think, I don't think age is as big of a deal on social media because people don't care anyways yeah you know like mm -hmm. if there was especially like if there was an adult who was trying to do something like that they wouldn't care how yeah. old you are i feel like that's not i mean you definitely it's better to hide information like that anyways but that one's not as big um i don't know i personally haven't really ran into a lot of problems with stuff like that okay. like information online so i i can't really speak on okay. how important it is yeah mm -hmm. i've never like had anybody ask me Information. I've been saying stuff this call, but I've been sure sharing with them. Yeah, I'm saying, yeah. No one's ever been like, like, can I come over? Or like, where do you live? Or like, <laughs> as you said, that's wild. <laughs> that's a wild thing to say. Or like, just like anything, like, where do you live? Or like, anything like that. Like, I don't know. I've never really like experienced it, but for information that like I put out. I think the most like personal thing I put out was like my name or my okay. age, and that's it. I wouldn't go any further than that. Do you think that there's a large, one of the main reasons why maybe you haven't experienced, all four of you haven't experienced much, because you guys did say that, for the most part, your parents like, were involved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, that, 100%. Yeah. So if your parents were less involved, maybe you'd be more apt to put something out there or search for. Yeah. Now, each of you, too, is pretty, you guys are all pretty popular kids. So how much do you think the social aspect of that, you know, maybe not having as many friends I connect with here at school makes me go home and then try to reach? Mm -hmm. And that's where, yeah. personally, I feel like a lot of times that's when kids get into trouble because they start to view those friendships online and mm -hmm. trust everything that this person is mm -hmm. saying, and they really don't know who they are, yeah. right? I mean, I never felt the need to go on to, like, a different app and contact people that I never knew before. Yeah. So I think that's probably about uh, yeah, I really only contacted like people I knew, especially like when I was younger. When I know like, especially being in high school, especially when kids have their licenses, a lot of kids are friends with kids from other schools. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like I know a lot of kids from other schools too, but a lot of them I met through sports. Okay. But like when I was younger, especially middle school, I really only talked to people that were at our school. I mean, I've definitely, I've had friends online from like that I've met playing video games and stuff. And that I've really only known them online, but a lot of them I've never I've never shared anything personal with them. Okay. I've never really like talked to them a whole lot. It would be maybe for like a month. But I think the big the big reason why I was like that was my parents always talked to me about it, and made it clear like 
don't share your information with people, especially ones you don't know. Like, don't don't talk to people. Don't ever meet up with anyone you don't know. And they always really stressed that to me when I was younger, and I feel like that, at least subconsciously, kind of followed with me that now I would never, if I didn't know someone personally, I would never, like, go meet them from if I met them online or anything like that. That's good. That's good. My parents, oh, sorry. No, no, you're good. My parents, I, this sounds like a little bit crazy, but they would, like, test me. <laughs> So like, I can never see your dad doing it. Like anymore. they would call the house phone, and they would be like, they would like, I, they would have me pick up, and like they would ask if I was home alone, and if I like I wasn't supposed to tell people that called the house that I was home alone. Like they would test me and like tell That's me like crazy. train me how to answer the house phone. And, like yeah, oh, wow. it, was, it sounds a little weird, but it worked. Like I don't tell anybody that, but yeah. yeah. Like my my grandparents always had a house phone too, and like a lot of it now is like scam callers just like wanting your money too so yeah. it's like people just want like your money and like your information to get into like your bank account or stuff like that so true yeah my dad did with Marie and his parents did. same thing yep. yeah that's great but, <clears throat> i'd be tempted to do something like that to my dad or something. <laughs> but yeah i mean it's just i i think i think you guys are are probably not the greatest when it comes to knowing that because you guys, you know, you're, you're in a household that is very open with you. You guys don't feel the need to go beyond your friends that you know for the most part here. You know, I, like I said, I think that from my experience anyway, I've had a couple of incidences with kids, but most of the time it was a kid that really was a recluse that really didn't have a lot of friends here. That they then seek that friendship outside and it, you know, it could start with a video game, it could start with an app, and then it goes further and further and further, you know. So I, I just trying to get an idea of what you guys thought was appropriate. You know, it's good to know that you're not willing to put your address out there. And I, mean, I think, because I have friends that like I only communicate through online, but I think it's very important that like it's okay to like communicate with them, but you just don't share anything like personal. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. it's okay to like call them, Facetime, like stuff like that, but use anything personal. Just yeah. Don't don't even bother with it. So, I mean, I might be adverse to this, but I think I might have scared my kid away because, you know, she was talking to this, this person on TikTok or Roblox, and the person was like fluffy unicorn or something. I said, that could be a 40-year-old guy in California. Yeah. You don't know who you're talking to. Yes. And she's like, you're so disgusting. That's not right. I'm like, yeah, no, it could be that too. That is. And I was, I was kind of annoyed because she was starting to talk about Maine. I live in Maine, and I'm like, um, I, I oh, don't know. Yeah. Yeah, because I was listening. Shut that down right away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But in her mind, I, I didn't want to go too far, but I felt like I did. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to scare her, but I didn't want to scare her, like, to the point of, like, never wanting to do it. But I wanted her to understand that that, that yeah. person online might not be who they say they are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So do you think I went too far? Or? No. No. That's good. No, I think, no, I think yeah. You she tell probably didn't even think of no, the possibility no. of that being. Yeah. She didn't. Well, she's yeah, like, don't people know. don't think she's about like, that. She's like, I only told the state I live in that. I didn't say where I live. I said, that's all. I mean, yeah, they can like, piece this stuff together. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that just for them to know that that's a possibility, is something yes. that they should yeah. watch out for is important. I mean, awesome. Because kids, kids don't know that. Yeah. They don't, they don't understand what could actually happen, especially having not seen it. Yeah. You know, especially not having social media at a young age, because that's where you see most of that stuff. Yeah, it's shown sure, of what's actually happening. Like I'm sure it's a very plausible thing of like a four year old man going to Roblox because he knows that all yeah. kids use Roblox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Exactly. Like that's his target. So yeah, yeah, it makes yeah. Sense. I mean, she's got friends on there that that do communicate, but for the most part, she doesn't talk about stuff like that. She knows, mm -hmm. and that's not the rule with her. You don't yeah. talk about where you live. You don't tell you your actual name, even though her name is in her handle. So I'm like, I'm, well, it's in on her thing. It's like Addie loves. So like, <laughs> her name is Addie. You put Addie loves in. But I let her keep it. I'm like, all right. But I, I do stay on top of it, you know, for the most part. But it, it just worries me about sometimes what kids think is okay to put out there. That's why I kind of want to get an idea from you guys about what you thought was appropriate and what you thought was not appropriate. It's a lot of just like having boundaries, like for your kid, like she said earlier, like like the expectations they need to live up to and like the boundaries that you set as a parent and like things to do on your phone and stuff to have. So just to give you, a, so I have had a, I had a kid that I got with at the middle school and she was very adamant to me that she hadn't put any of her personal information out there. So I was able to, I went outside the school with her so I could get off the school Wi-Fi and I, so I went on to TikTok to her TikTok and I watched four videos and I said, I can find out off these videos, just what you have in your background. I can tell where you're at. 
I have a picture of your house. I have now the layout of your bedroom and access that I would have to windows because she was filming herself inside of her room. I wouldn't have thought of that. So yeah, that's 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 the, the piece where I you know see a lot little more of that, but a lot of times you don't want to tell you where you live, but you're filming something outside your house or you're filming a license plate in the background that has a main plate on it, you know, and yeah. people can run plates these days. You know, they got your box number off the mailbox. So I, I try to tell kids to be careful of videos and stuff that they do post of themselves or on their story or whatnot. Um, do you guys think that that, you know, is useful information that's good for kids like? Yeah. Because I, I also do a little internet class with the kids at the middle school, but I don't really do much for the high school. Mm -hmm. I don't know how much information you guys can hear. You guys are all pretty smart kids. Yeah. But how many of you guys have thought about stuff like that? I've never thought about it. Like, yeah. Not yeah. really just said it. Like, in the bathroom? <laughs> yeah. Is it going to make you go back and look at your, your TikTok reel? And make sure <laughs> I'll, I'll post on TikTok, so I'll know where you're going. All right. Now, I mean, and, and that's what a lot of this is to parents, too, is that a lot of them, like even like we were talking about with the sex person thing, a lot of kids don't know what that is. Mm -hmm. And um, so basically what that is, is if you at any point have ever sent anything, even it could be even like something, you could be clothed, but usually it's a, some type of new picture or something that you don't want out there, then they use that as leverage to get money from you or to get you to do different things. And it is a very real thing that is out there right now that happens a lot. And what I was telling them is I, Johnny Kelker, your guys mm -hmm. told me that he had a kid that had his face superimposed onto a body. And then that person was threatening to send this to all of his family members if he didn't pay them. And this kid was like freaking out. And like didn't go to didn't go to Johnny until a while later. And they were able to take care of it. But that kind of stuff is out there, especially now with AI, mm -hmm. you can yeah. easily create that. So I think it's gonna be a lot more of an issue down the road. You know, just imagine your face on a body that you know is not yours, but they're saying it is yours, and they're going to send it to all of your contacts in your email or all of your friends on your, you know what I mean? And that would motivate you a lot of times and be like, oh, I'll do whatever you want, don't do it, and that's where it leads down this road. Yeah. So, I, to me personally, and you guys can tell me what you think, but I think education on this matter is probably the best defense to it. And the only thing I can ever tell you is if you're, for me personally, is that the longer you wait, the worse it gets. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. is as embarrassing or as uh, annoyed as it might be I think the best thing you can do is either go to your parents go to a teacher or go to a police if you, if whatever and say something right off because that's the only way this is ever going to stop and that was the only way it stopped with this bill mm -hmm. man is that he'd been dealing with it for weeks and went to Calker and Calker took care of it but that stuff is real so oh, yeah I think um, what I was saying earlier in the beginning where it's important for parents to build trust with their kids, that's a big reason why is because kids, if they if they feel like that there's gonna be a negative reaction from their parents yeah. or from a trusted adult, they won't say anything. If they're scared, if they're scared of what's happening, you don't want them to be more scared of how you're gonna feel when, like how your parents are gonna feel when they find out. Cause then kids won't say anything. They will, they won't do it, they won't say anything and they'll just freak out on their own or do whatever this person asks because they feel that is a safer option for them than talking to their parents. When in reality, I'm sure 99% of parents would much rather them talk to them and deal with it. They'd be less upset at kids for doing it than they would for like not saying anything. I agree. And I think that's why it's important early on, especially like before they have social media, to build that trust with them. To be able to talk to you about everything because if not, then they will do that. And that's just kind of like, I know, I'm just thinking like specific example. My parents always, they always talked to me about little things when I was younger. You know, like they would always ask me how my day was and things like that. And it definitely, like looking back, definitely made it easier growing up to just talk to them in general. So if I were to have problems like this, I know talking to them would be a lot easier because I feel more comfortable talking to them okay. instead of, Especially like with like parents using like you said earlier like iPads and stuff to like babysit their kids. If they do that instead of having their kids talk to them and stuff, kids just won't be as comfortable to talk to them in general, and that's gonna that's gonna make it a lot harder for them to talk to their parents about big important things like that happening yeah. if they don't feel like they can talk to their parents at all to begin with. Yeah. You know. So you guys agree that probably the worry is 
What would you think would be the biggest deterrence for a kid your age to say something if something like that was out there about them? Um, but yeah, probably just them being scared of mm. how their parents would react. Yeah, just the embarrassment. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, like, I'd just be like, I'd mostly be embarrassed about it. Like, I wouldn't want them to, like, judge me or, like, think anything less of me or, like, anything like that. So yeah. I probably wouldn't say anything. Mm -hmm. I think, I think what Calvin said is huge, like, I think it depends on like how your parent reacts when you tell them stuff. Because if, if like I know I've never had to deal with it, but some of my friends like their parents like flip out when they get mad. Yeah. So like if I was a kid and my parent flips out when they get mad, I'm not gonna go to them. I'm not trying to deal with that. Mm -hmm. So like I would figure out a way to handle it myself. Mm -hmm. But like kids should go to their parents even if they're gonna get mad because parents have a faster way to solve it than kids do. Gotcha. Let me flip the script a little bit on you guys. Mm -hmm. So you're not the one that sent it, or you're the one that got it, but a friend shows you that they have a new picture of another kid in the school. What would your reaction be to that? Um, honestly, probably just like tell them it's gross and why why do you have that? You yeah. know, because like kids, I don't know, especially especially when they're younger, like middle school age, I feel like kids really almost like value having that i don't know it's kind of just like almost like an ego thing yeah i've totally found that and so because kids kind of like feel like that it's almost like a popularity thing or would it make them yeah it would make them feel like they're cooler because of it and a lot of kids don't realize that how gross it is and really. they just think it's funny yeah they're like oh my god look at this and it's just like Sad, right? Yeah. yeah. It's like um, almost like annoying that kids do that to people. Because like you never know what their life is actually like. Like at home, like some kids like might not eat dinner at night or something. Or some kids like might not like have their own bed to sleep in. Like I know a lot of people don't have their own room. Yeah. Like and they have to sleep in the same room as their brother. <clears throat> so like it really goes like just like don't do that to kids. Because you never know what their life might be like. I think, I think my first question would be like, why do you have that? Because I think what they said is very true with the ego stuff. Like when I was in middle school, I was a very like, I didn't like doing anything. Never, I, I didn't experience anything. <laughs> but like my friends, like I had a very close friend of mine that was like very involved in stuff like that. And then he would show me, I'd be like, get that away from me. Like, yeah. And then I know his mom caught him doing stuff he shouldn't be doing, but that's also like federal. If you get caught with that stuff on your phone, it's a very, very bad thing. I just don't know like what the best way to deal with it would be. Like, mm -hmm. how do you shut that down if it's already been sent out to someone? So you people? asking me? I'm asking you because I don't know like what, like what the best response would be. So, look, I mean, I had friends in high school too. I, 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 we didn't have the availability of technology. I would just say that the. What, what frustrates me about your generation, and it could be my generation too a little bit, is that the whole the whole fear of, you know, I don't want to be a snitch, I don't want to do this, I don't want to do that, I don't want to, you know, and a lot of times what I try, what I do to get kids to understand is that I'm not really trying to get you in trouble, I'm more or less trying to get rid of the picture that is destroying his family and has the potential to really cause some harm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On top of the fact that I'm watching out for you federally, because mm. if you send it to somebody, next thing you know, or upload it, now we've created this huge problem that is very yeah. hard to put back into a bottle, because yeah. mm -hmm. once that picture's out there. So my advice to you would be this, as uncomfortable as it may be, I would, you would have to go to someone, honestly, yeah. because the only way this ever, if you just hope that the kid's going to do the right thing, how many times in that situation do you think a kid your age is going to do the right thing? Not a lot. No. Yeah. Yeah. One out of ten. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So you can't put it in their hands. And I don't want you to be the snitch, but there is ways that you can do it discreetly. You know, is there, if he's shown you or she's shown you, chances are they've shown other people. So it doesn't always have to be you. Um, but the way I would feel about it now is, at least I know my side is clean, like my conscience is clean, I did the right thing. Because yeah. you've got to lose what this person could do with that photo, mm -hmm. what that person is looking to do. And all of a sudden, they have a breakup, and he's like, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. You know, I wouldn't want that power in their hands. So, if, if it was me, if I was you, I wouldn't put it in their hands. I would say something to somebody, 
You could even start with going to your parents. Hey, on Johnny's phone, I saw this. Just mm -hmm. to let you know, I don't know what to do with it. What do you recommend? Uh, hopefully, they would be like, yeah, let's go to the school admin or let's go to the PD. Let's make a report. And most of the time, I think that's what you'd experience because mm -hmm. parents don't want that stuff out there either. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how you feel about that, but I know it's probably not what you want to hear, but I just, I don't think, even in your age group, that it's smart to trust that person to make the right decision. Because they were, they, there would have had to have been some type of asking mm -hmm. involved as well. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't imagine kids just sending that for the sake of, hey, you know what? That's my friend over there. It's more of a, hey, I love you, you love me. Why don't you send me this? Or I also do this back. You know what I mean? Sometimes that's how this evolves. And then that person betrays it, this person, or they break up, and next thing you know, it's out there. Um, so if it was me, that's what I would do. And there is discrete ways you can do it. If it's like an online thing, there are online services that you could do. But if, it was, if you guys trust your SRO, Johnny's a pretty good guy. Mm -hmm. He's never, he's never made the right thing for you. And we, we always do our best not to put your names out there. You know, kids always come to me like, my friend's going to know. Yeah, there's some instances where they find out, but most of the time it's because kids go out and say something after we tell them, yeah. Shh, be yeah. quiet about it, you know, mm -hmm. and we can keep it under control. Mm -hmm. But if it was me in that situation, I would, I would say something to, you know, mom, dad, or SRO, or even a trusted adult within the school. I'm sure you guys all have that one teacher. I mean, Mr. Mm -hmm. Landry was my teacher. I would have gone to him with anything. Um, but I had a very good relationship with my parents too. And I would have gone with them. And we all made mistakes. And so if you and a lot of times with that, if we can keep it at the local level, then they don't get impacted federally. They don't get impacted by, you know, FBI mm -hmm. or the internet crimes against kids. It doesn't go that far because we're able to contain that at a local level. And then the mom or the dad on the other on the victim is happy because the picture's gone mm -hmm. and the original one's gone. That's, that's the ultimate goal with this stuff. And a lot of times it's impossible because the person will upload it to like a, yeah, it's a bad like website and then it's out there. And once that happens, they're really... You can't yeah. stop it. Yeah. I feel like it's like never really gone. Because like the photo, like so many different people will have it. Yeah. Like a lot of people like will just share like people just because... It's one of the biggest things that I wish if, if anything I could in part on, you know, freshmen all the way up to, but it, now it's starting as low as, you know, also sixth grade, seventh grade. It's probably even lower, all right? So I, I always try to install upon them, you know, no matter how much you think this person likes you or doesn't like you, never send something. Don't ever send anything that you wouldn't want your mommy to dad or your grandma, grandpa, or something like that to see. Yeah. And they're like, well, when you put it like that, it's not a lot. I'm like, well, <laughs> I mean, what do you? What's the point of sending that anyway? I mean, if you're dating somebody, you're going to see them every day in school, right? Why do they have to see that side of you? you know, why does it have to be that intimate? Why are you trusting that person this much? It's a high school relationship. Yeah. What do you think the chances are that's going to continue on past high school? Like, you know, put things in that big, big spectrum sometimes, and it helps you to make a little better decisions. But I mean, you guys are really good kids, so it's not a worry, but it's, you know, for parents out there, I do worry that they don't have these conversations. Like, I want to have this conversation with my kid. How would you guys feel about that if your parents came to you and talked to you about, hey, you said your parents were very open. Did they ever talk to you about this kind of stuff? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah, totally. the, the, Yeah, they did. Across the board? I think, yeah. I think the big thing, though, is, especially for kids, it's really hard to, like I was saying, to fully understand it without experiencing it themselves. I know there's plenty of things that I've heard a million times. I can't think of anything specific, but I know it's happened. Just things I've heard a bunch of times, like, oh, don't do this, this will happen, this will happen. And then you don't even realize it until it happens, and you're like, oh, now I have to deal with this, you know? Yeah. And I feel like that's the big thing is with kids, it's really hard because they'll hear it a million times, and then they won't be thinking about it, and it'll happen, and then something goes wrong, and now... Yeah. Now they now they understand, and I think that's just kind of it's just one of those things that like you I mean you have to try your best to really encourage them not to do it, but you don't not like you not like you have to expect it, but you have to be ready for when it might happen because even if you've told them a million times it will happen, and just kind of the same thing earlier the trusting is like you have to make sure that they know that 
when if you have to take action about it, it's from a point that you care about them. Because yeah. especially if they're like, oh, my parents have told me this a million times and it still happened anyways, they're going to be even more worried about, I mean, even, I'm sure there's things that's happened like that my parents told me a million times and I know that they would only approach it from a perspective that they care about me, but I would still be scared to tell them because it's like, they told me this so many times, I, it still ended up happening. Right. Yeah. yeah, and not, not with this specific example. But no, no, I'm just, I know what you're saying. Yeah, and so it's just, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's a hard balance to really make sure your kid knows, but also know that you care about them. But I think just the big thing is make sure they know first, like they're, the most important thing is that it's from a point that you care about them and you want to do what's best for them. Yeah. Because if they, if they're like, if they know more that you care about them and they're less worried about like a punishment, then they'll be so much more ready to take action if something like that happens because there's a good chance it will. These kids especially aren't like thinking about it in the moment. That's one of those like you gain trust too, like with your kids and your parents, like if something goes like that happens, mm -hmm. you have the trust that you can go tell your parents. Too. I know I said my brothers weren't beneficial to me for getting the absolute, but they were very beneficial to me when it came to stuff like this. Like, because yeah. they experienced it first. So I was like, they made me aware of like the possibilities of like what could happen. And like they like anything bad, like they made me aware of it. Yeah. Like before I got anything. Yeah, I mean your older brother definitely was probably at the beginning half of lots of like cell phone cameras and stuff like that where it kinda opened up a lot more of this. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean cameras are smaller and you add them, but you know, it's only within the last what, ten, fifteen not even how old's your brother? He's twenty Oh, so he's probably not. I think it's how old are you saying? Cameras and phones have been probably fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yeah. Yeah, I got my first one twenty years ago. I mean that's that to me is what opened up a lot of this is the ability to go into your room with a camera, you know, right there. You know, you, when I was a kid you used to have to take it and then you had to bring it down to the store to get it developed. <laughs> so, you, know, you don't want the, you don't want somebody to be looking at something like that. You know what I mean? So that, that really wasn't an option for me. But you guys, I couldn't imagine what I would have done if I had a camera like, right then and there. Or, like, I think I would have been crazy, but you never know. I mean, you know, we're, we're all kind of kids in one slew, so I mean, I've been there. I, it's tough. I mean, and, and I can sit here and tell you guys what, I, what, what you should do looking at as a police officer that's 40 something years old, but you know, if I was in that position, my buddy just showed me the one. I mean, yeah, when I was your age. I'd probably been like, okay, uh, that's weird. <laughs> and then moved on. You know, I, I wouldn't have thought about doing it. But it's tough because it's so much more prevalent with you guys. Mm -hmm. It's so much more. Yeah. yeah. Like, I, and I feel like it's amazing for me to hear that you guys have such good relationship with your parents that you can trust them to go with that. That's my hope someday with my kid is that she doesn't do this stuff because I had conversations with her because she trusts me and will come to me. You know, and that's the big thing that I always want to pass on to the parents too, is to build that yeah. with your parents. All right. And that's what I feel like I'm getting across the board from you guys, mm -hmm. is that the main reason you haven't done it is because you've stayed active, you know, you're popular kids in school, or you have friends in school and stuff like, you know. So, anyway. Yeah. And like, even like about that, like your marriage, like he has an older brother, like I have two older sisters, right? Like my sister is 26 and the other one's 24, and like, They've definitely showed me like the ropes of like things that they did when they were kids and like my older sister, she was a terrible kid. Like and when she was a teenager, like forget it. Like she did all the stuff like you shouldn't do. Like she did it all. And like now like looking back at her, I'm like, Oh my god, I never wanna be like the other kid. Like like now you're the, you're the oldest, right? You're no, older. I have a older sister. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know he's got two older brothers. You got an older brother. Yeah, yeah like so. definitely having like the older sibling is definitely I good. That. Yeah. 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 It's easier to talk to they, you, right? Yeah, like, I was Maya, say. Maya, my say. boy. <laughs> 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 I can imagine the conversations with that guy. Right, yeah. I love Maya. And having so. the older sibling is definitely yeah. way easier to talk to than your parents. Mm -hmm. Like I would definitely choose my sister over my parents talking to them about yeah. situations and stuff. 
So the last, the last one I wanted to touch on real, real big, which is also one of the main reasons why my chief asked me to do this kind of stuff with you guys, is, is the online harassment bullying thing. Pretty, pretty, pretty big thing in the middle school level. I don't know. Yeah. What's your guys' yeah. experience with some of that stuff? I think, um, I, I know I was in seventh grade, I was kind of involved in like a bowling thing. I'm sure you remember. <laughs> I'm sure you remember. I don't remember all of it, but yeah. I do remember a little bit. I, and like looking back, from my perspective, I didn't even really like realize what was happening. Yeah. I think that it's kind of hard for kids to understand what they're doing in those moments, especially, you know, 12, 13. Like at the time, I didn't really, because what happened was it was like, with, for me, it was just two kids that were like arguing and I was sticking up for one of them. And then a few more of us got involved and we were sticking up for the other kid. And then it just turned into us all harassing this one kid. Yeah. And like, even when it was happening, I mean, I ended up getting in a fight with this kid. And it wasn't, it wasn't like a fight, but you know, it was, yeah. you know. And uh, like looking back, even at the time, I still didn't realize like what I had done until like they like told me about it and stuff. And I like really, I was like, wow. yeah, you're right. Like that happened. I think it's just like with it, like with everything, especially online, it's hard for kids to, like I was saying before, it's hard for them to understand what they're doing. And like, I know that happened with me and it's hard because kids don't, until they've been like in that position where they, because the big thing is like with me, I still didn't, even, at first especially, I still didn't really even understand it from a point of like, I'm actually like harass, like I'm harassing this kid yeah. until it, I understood from a point of like, oh, I'll get punished for it, you know? And that's, that's kind of the big thing with younger kids is they don't, they don't really look at things like in depth they look at it from the perspective of how the reactions are going to be held. So that's why, like, I I was worried about getting in trouble for it, not worried about the fact that, you know, I'm, like, I'm harassing this kid. Yeah. And looking back now, it's like, I wish I hadn't done that. And I'm, I'm friends with this kid, so it's not like, yeah. like, you know, like, I apologize, made up, we're friends. But looking back, I wish I didn't, I wouldn't have done that because I wish I didn't treat him like that. Mm -hmm. But at the time, I know, like I said, I was just worried about the punishment and stuff, and so it's hard for them really understand what they're doing especially with support from other kids like like i said like it was like three or four of us that joined in and we're all just like now now we're being mean to this kid because we thought he was being mean to another kid that we were friends with yeah. even though they were both doing it yeah. and so because of that i mean we definitely like not we treated this kid pretty poorly <laughs> you know yeah how about you man? Any great experiences um, with this? No, I haven't personally experienced any kind of like bullying or cyberbullying, but like I think it's harder, especially for younger kids, to recognize where you cross the line between like just messing around and like making jokes and then like consistently like making those jokes and like yeah, you know. yeah. Um, I would say like the platform where there's the most bullying is probably TikTok. Okay. Because I think, I feel like, because the videos get around, like, way more. So you like, post comment on the video? Yeah, so, like, everybody can see these videos. Like, you're not posting to your followers. Like, it's showing up on people's 40 pages. Okay. And I think that's how it gets spread. And, like, I just think that those, some kind, kinds of videos can come off in the wrong way. And then they just get the wrong amount of comments and stuff. And gotcha. then it gets, like, more comments, more views, more, and then it just blows up. Yeah. Yeah. I know, like, I have definitely, like, had my share of, like, bullying and, like, picking on people and, like, commenting, like, what are you doing? Or, like, what the hell is that? Like, stuff like that. But, like, like looking back on it now, I'm like, I couldn't imagine, like, anyone saying that to me. Like, I'd feel like a dirtbag if someone said that about me or, like, said that to my face or, like, anything or, like, the clothes that I wear or, like, anything. Like, I know some people, like, just, like, don't have like the structure they need growing up so like, they don't really know but like just like getting bullied is like not cool it's yeah. like, not fun to experience either i i think that like there's a reason that it really only happens in school and like over the phone because like if you see a kid with their parent they, no. they're never bullying somebody yeah like even if they see the kid that they're bullying in school like <laughs> i think that they that kids believe that they can like get away with it kind of because mm -hmm. their parent like won't find out but the second it like Malaya said Malaya sorry <laughs> but like they don't understand when they cross the line mm -hmm. like it's very for kids it's very blurred of like 
the line. So I think once it gets to a higher extent, you tell the parents, and then the kid, the parents get on the kid, it kind of like starts to die down after that. So what would your advice be to parents as far as trying to stay ahead of this, you know, trying to protect your kid from it? Because I've actually seen many instances where the mom or dad gets online and then starts to engage these at the kids on it. And I'm like, uh, mm -hmm. I wouldn't do that, uh, <laughs> you know. Like my mom would do that. <laughs> You'd be amazed at how many do that. So, you, you know, you hope that the one that's going to step in and just be like, you know, my advice is always, you know, even if I deal with a kid in school that I know that could potentially carry on outside the schools, I always tell them, go home, turn off social media. Don't yeah. even engage social media. Just give it a couple of weeks. This is going to get worse if you. So, what would your advice be to parents to kind of help them stay ahead of that kind of stuff? I think, I think turning off social media is a very like good idea because that that like kind of instigates it all. Like Emily said, like with TikTok and stuff. Yeah. Like, when you see other people like your friends getting after somebody, I feel like kids think it's like cool to join in. Yeah. yeah. And then you start going with their friends. I think that's I also a problem. That. There's a lot of bystanders, or like not even people that are deliberately bullying, but just like watching it happen. Posting it, LOL. Yeah. Or, or just like yeah. Too. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do see that, you know, quite a bit, and I always try to get people to you know shut it off. It's like if you see that the conversation is start, but it's like trying to get somebody at that age to understand. Okay. Back off the gas pedal, hit the brake. <laughs> they, they don't see it. It's yeah. like, you know, like you said, they're yeah. very much emotional. It's, yeah, it's emotional and very like subconscious. Like they, I think like the kids who are bullying, they don't, like I was saying, like me, like they don't realize what they're doing, but also they don't realize that subconsciously, like they think they, they feel better about themselves yeah. when they do it. And so the problem is they're just doing it and they don't, they don't even understand why they're doing it a lot of the time. Like, like, it, like I was saying, like mine, like it started off, we were just, we thought we were defending this kid. And then looking back, it was like, I, we just harassed this kid for a few months. We yeah. weren't even defending this kid anymore. But the whole time we thought to ourselves, oh yeah, we're defending this one kid. So at least if you were righteous and do it. Exactly. We didn't, like, we didn't understand. And I think, I think that's a lot of times like what happens with kids too is it just snowballs. They don't understand. More people join in. And now it's a lot of it's just one kid being bullied by a bunch of people and the kids who are bullying him don't even really realize. They don't, it's the same thing like with scrolling through social media, they don't stop to think, why am I doing this right now? And I've been scrolling through Instagram Reels for two hours. They don't stop to think, why am I, why am I still like going after this kid? He's not even, he's stopped doing whatever he's doing. Or even if, even if it's a kid who's not doing it, really doing anything wrong, like a kid who's just being himself or not. Yeah, like someone who's just, doing nothing and then now people are harassing him because they think he's weird or something and these kids don't understand that they're just like harassing this kid so they don't they don't really get like what they're doing especially because they haven't had it happen themselves so they don't know how it so do you think it's more beneficial to do an education with that kind of kid or what, what do you think the resolution would be with that? um because if they don't understand what they're doing and you have an adult telling them hey yeah. this is really bad you shouldn't do this because most of the time, by the time it gets to me, the assistant principal, the principal have already dealt with it, and now it's still going on, and then they bring me in because it's like, okay, we've had enough. Something needs to be done. I think it's, I think it's really hard because kids, a lot of kids respond differently, so I don't really think there is like a solution. Like my, my parents always told me to be nice to people when I was younger, be kind to people, and like, I, like in that instance, I didn't really think about it, but once I realized what was happening, because that's how I was always raised, was to be nice people, I I felt bad for them and stuff like that, and I really like kind of put in perspective. And, you know, obviously at that point, the damage has already been done, but like I tried my best to make it up to him, to become friends with him again, and I we're friends now. He goes to a different school, but, yeah. um, but I think that's hard depending on how your kids are raised, because a lot of kids aren't raised kind of with that idea necessarily to be kind and maybe it's not really like they're raising an idea at all with that so because they don't really know they don't they don't have that thought of like oh i shouldn't be doing this because it's just a not nice thing to do to other people yeah. especially once they haven't experienced it themselves like i was never bullied and so because of that in that instance it was hard for me to like understand what's happening until i really like i really pieced it all together and i was told like by this principal stuff like you just bullied this and that's 
what kind of made, that's what kind of made me realize what had actually happened. And I think because I, like I said, I came from that background of being raised to be a lot nicer towards kids, it made it easier to understand it. But if kids aren't really raised with like kind of an idea like that, they still might not get it because they, just, they don't know, they don't know why, you know, they don't know what they're doing. They don't understand why it's wrong because they don't know how it feels. They don't, they don't know, they don't know how to treat other people really, yeah. you know? And so I think that just kind of makes it harder to determine how to handle kids with that. I think most of the time, if it's a kid who's kind of raised in the same situation with me, like as I was, I think they'll, I think they will realize it on their own. It just kind of needs to be put in perspective for them. But I think, especially for the kids who don't really understand that, I think that's kind of just like, the big thing is try and get them to understand, I guess, to be nicer to other kids, but also like try and get them to understand how the other kid feels.